What does the cleaning industry really talk about? Beyond Clean with Ace is a podcast to explore just that. Now in its sixth season, Beyond Clean with Ace has hosted hundreds of influencers from around the globe. Listen to people who are excited about providing healthy, positive, and proactive information. Share their experiences, passions, and helpful tips. Now let's join our host, Dave Thompson, Director for the Academy of Cleaning Excellence, as he speaks with yet another leading influencer from our industry. Hello, everyone. This is Dave Thompson. I am your host here at Beyond Clean with Ace, a podcast where the cleaning industry talks And as the name of the podcast would surmise, we talk about anything and everything, and it doesn't always have to be about cleaning. But it's the first of the month, uh, at least on a Monday anyway. Some people uh, corrected me. The first of the month came, and it was, uh, I said, hey, for me, podcast, my routine guest speakers, it's the first of the month on a Monday. Welcome, Mickey Anderson. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) It is always so good to hear and see, now that we're doing our podcast, both audio and uh, uh, video, um, what you don't know, folks, unless you've already listened to the podcast before, is Mickey is not in the same, well, I guess we are in the same continent, but there's a little line between the two of us. (laughs) Just a a little line and a lot of miles. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, Mickey, for those who have not joined us before, let's catch them up. Yeah. So, I'm Mickey Anderson. I'm a marketing strategist way up north in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So, I'm, I'm, you can look up <laughs> and see me way up north. And, uh, and I'm happy to chat all things marketing and business growth with you. And uh, Mickey was one of these that uh, came to me. We were both on a program called Podmatch. And uh, we we see, I don't know, Mickey, about you, but I mean, it seems like if I would actually go there all the time, Podmatch is giving us like three new potential uh, guests about every couple hours. Yeah, I, my messages on that platform are out of control. <laughs> <laughs> gives you a lot, a lot of options. But you know what? And, and, and folks, this is why I say beyond clean. And I'm, we're, I'm so glad that I found that uh, for one is because it's always some fresh people with new ideas and everything. We hooked up on there, uh, had a good podcast. And then I said, hey, why don't you do this on a monthly basis? And she came back last month. And folks, here we are again. Here we now, are. Uh, we recorded another podcast earlier uh, that, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, folks, uh, and watching, will know what we're talking about. But I'm going to kind of start this off because, uh, uh, yeah, Mickey, I was at the local butcher this weekend. He said, I've sold all my turkeys. And I was like, I had to stop and think a minute. And he goes, Thanksgiving, turkeys? I go, oh, yeah, okay. You know, because I've seen Christmas stuff up already. Um, you're excited about Christmas? Yes. Or I, I am excited about the month of December in general, um, but not for the reasons most people are. <laughs> hey, you're to, in Canada, girl. Come on. <laughs> I get to escape the cold and uh, head down south to first Las Vegas for the Nationals Finals Rodeo, where we try and go every year. And it's just the most fun possible. If you remotely enjoy Vegas, if you go for the rodeo, you're just going to be blown away. It is the nicest people, a great environment, great music, tons of entertainment. It's just a blast. And then a few weeks later, I'm heading down to the Caribbean, to the Bahamas for Christmas. You know, what's interesting is almost everybody, I said this earlier in another podcast, is is like, Almost everybody that you talk to, no matter what walk of life they're in, travel is now on their mind, top foremost, it's the thing. Um, Are you going to try to get it all in one month? (laughs) December just happens to be the most convenient month because I bank a lot of vacation time and a lot of projects. Most of my clients take time off, and so it works out. The workload's normally really low, and that just, it's kind of my month escape. Um, but I do travel pretty frequently throughout the year, less than my husband, who's in the military. He is gone most of the time. So when I get the chance to travel and he's here, I take it. 
So I'm, I'm assuming that you're going together and not alone. I'm going to Vegas with my mom. My oh. husband is staying home with my daughter. And then we're going as a family to the Bahamas. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, what's interesting about doing podcasts is it seems like every time I turn something, somebody's got another new podcast up. Um, you know, we're in our sixth season here. And the the problem, and, and folks, I got to tell you, the reason I'm talking to Mickey and all these other people is because you people in the cleaning industry don't want to talk. <laughs> And you, and you think that's you think that is a joke, but I am not joking. Um, and I don't know whether it's because they're always working and they work late and they're you're recording during the day. I even told a guy, heck, if you want me to, I'll record at 10 o'clock at night with you. Um, he said, no, but I'm too busy. I don't have time to actually talk with you. So anyway, folks, uh, why are we talking to Mickey? And this is a podcast predominantly, as we said, about cleaning. It works its way into every conversation because you know what, Mickey, as you talked to us last time, we still have to market what we do. And a lot of our cleaning contractors are small, under $200,000 a year revenue type businesses. And they don't have the resources to find out what to do and how to do and if they don't have time to stay in here and talk with me, they don't, certainly don't have time for that. You know, it's I speak with so many business owners in that category. We call them micro businesses, um, where it's you know a small team hustling, grinding, working hard, doing all the things. And you know, so many business owners will say, "I don't have time to create content. I don't have time to market my business." And it's right. well, the problem really isn't that you don't have time for those things. It's that you're spending your time doing the things that aren't actually growing your business. You're working in your business instead of on your business. And you need to be able to separate the two and identify what are actually revenue generating activities and prioritize those as opposed to using busy work as an excuse to do something that you're uncomfortable doing. I like how you said busy work. I'm sure that some people would not say that is true because they're making money. Mm. But could someone else do that work for you so you could make more money? Well, and there goes in whenever I talk about <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, yeah, and, and, and thank you because I talk about this all the time and it goes back to what you said a minute ago. You know, we have people that are so busy working that they forget the rest of it. Um, I have a job bidding class for the cleaning industry. And I, I, I talk about two different things. One is, are you just paying the bills or are you planning to go to Aruba? And it's like, guy scratches his head and I go, um, if you go to Aruba, you have to have a business that will be there when you get back or you won't be going there again. Yep, it's so true. You know, I think, that's the big difference between the businesses that stay small and the businesses that grow consistently is they're bringing in team members in places that can be replicated, right? So the service delivery, anytime you can get someone in to help deliver the service, you need somebody who is actively looking at the vision and the future and the growth of your business. And if no one's doing that, there is no vision, there is no future, there is no growth. <laughs> it's a bit of a harsh reality, but it's true. And it, it, it doesn't have to be a huge switch right off the bat. You're not going to give up your full-time job and just hop into marketing your business and hope for the best. But a few hours a week can make a huge, huge difference. If you can commit one hour per day, one hour per day, start your day earlier if you need to, but commit one hour per day to making connections, growing your business, getting on podcasts, putting your name out there, you're going to see a change. It just takes consistency and time. But the more that you can grow that, the better. And this is what you and I did with Podbean. Or I, I'm sorry, Podmatch. Yep. Um, you know, with Podmatch, it does take time for you and I to review all of the incoming uh, opportunities and then weed through those, which ones fit, which ones don't, uh, set up the times and everything. And so just like you, I have to schedule some time in my schedule to do those but then they bring opportunities like this. You and I would have never done this if I would not have done that. Exactly. And the thing with those tasks too, right? That that doesn't have to be a you task. 
Um, one of the things that I talk to a lot of business owners about is instead of hiring for task delegation and roles, it's you just want to find those key people who have the personality, who have the values, who who actively are looking for ways to help you grow your business, who are invested, and then you build the roles and tasks around that person. And those can be varied and they can test, but that's a great way to get started is instead of focusing on, I need to get these tasks done by this professional, like I just need one person who's willing to do the time and practice the skills. Because if I'm documenting what I'm doing, if I'm taking the time to write out the steps and the things that I care about, I can work through that with another person. And so they can do that simple task for me in about 10 minutes, go through my messages, send a few messages out here and there. That frees me up so much more capacity to be in interviews, to be out doing other things that are important to me. And so I think it's about making really starting with a list of all of the things that matter to you and your business, the type of person you want to work with, the character traits that you're looking for, find that person and then help them build the role around what they do best. And you're going to do better off. You are absolutely going to grow your business that way. Podcasting is marketing? Absolutely it is. It's getting your name out. Marketing is any way that you are communicating the value of what you provide, your brand. That's it, right? So it doesn't have to be actively selling, but anytime you're spreading the message of who you are, what you do, that's marketing. And it can be in podcasts, it can be in conversations at a coffee shop, or it can be on your website. Yeah, and I, I think this is the interesting thing is, is, you know, I can talk with people about, hey, you need to come and talk about your business. Tell us what you do. Uh, hey, I'm op open to anybody that wants to talk about cleaning on a regular basis, right? Yeah. So we, yeah. we, we, do, we, we started a program that we do a monthly broadcast. Uh, four of us get on a panel. We just discuss the topics and stuff. And I tapped one of my students from about six years ago who started his own business, cleaning business uh, in the Tampa uh, Bay, Florida area. And they've grown it year over year and everything. And uh, at first when I said, he goes, oh, how much time is that going to take? But now his, <laughs> it was funny. After the first podcast, his wife goes, uh, you did mention me, did you not? <laughs> Yeah, because I think this is it. This is it. Once that you start learning that this is another form of, and COVID, and this is what I talked on the last podcast, I think it taught a lot of people these lessons that were always there, but we were too busy to learn. Yeah. And I think a lot of business owners have this perspective of marketing and sales and even their client list, right? Well, I've got these clients and if I just keep them, times are tough. If I can just keep these clients, I'll be good. But one of the most important things you can do, and I'll use like a baseball analogy, is, is build your bench of leads, of potential customers. Start developing relationships because you don't know right? A business can go through hard times. You can lose a client or a package can get shrunk down, right? They might not need you as frequently or want to keep working with you at some point. And if you haven't built that bench, you're going to find yourself in a very uncomfortable position, scrambling and desperate. So instead, if you can be proactive, finding ideal clients, building relationships, so when the opportunity arises, you're ready, that is the most powerful thing you can do when you're first getting started marketing your business. So folks, if you've been listening to my podcast over the last six years, there's a few, a few favorite words that I like. And Mickey just used one of those words, proactive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the big keys, at least from my viewpoint, that marketing is a proactive part of your business. It's not, it, it, and, and it's not um, stagnant, it's ever changing. And I think that's what being proactive is, is looking forward. We're doing the cleaning festivals and we have guest speakers that are going to be keynote. And when we came up, uh, they came up and said, well, it's time for us to bring these back again. Uh, do you have some speakers lined up? Well, you know what? I've got a whole laundry list. I've been talking with them for years and I just tapped a few of them. That's the bench you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, the word proactive is super powerful. In marketing, there, there are times when you have to be reactive. Something happens, you need to release the press relief, right? Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's always going to be those moments, but if that's all you're doing, you're playing defense 100% of the time. You need to play offense to win a game. You do. 
right? <laughs> and especially going into challenging times, you don't want to be in the defensive position, reactive. You want to have the offense ready to go because that's how you're going to beat out the competition. So right, anybody so think, watching Monday Night Football tonight is going to understand. Mickey said you got to have a <laughs> touchdown or you got to have that ball across the end zone. Uh, you can't play defense all night. That's it. That's it. But most business owners, especially in those first couple of years, that's where they are because they're just trying to master what they've got. Right? I need to I need to figure out how this works before I jump out and try and be proactive. But that's not actually true. You don't have to know anything to just start trying. <laughs> <laughs> Most people think that marketers know it all. We know exactly how things are going to work and what's going to be great and what's not. We have no idea. We are <laughs> always testing. Like that's, if you take anything away, we're figuring it out. And you can too, but you can't figure it out until you get on the field and try. So you have you know, to get what, out there you, and throw a couple passes. You got to have a dartboard to at least shoot at. I mean, you know, you got to, I mean, you got to have a bullseye on that dartboard before you throw that dart. Um, yes. You got to kind of know where you're intending to go. And I think that's like the, my student that's going to be in class tomorrow is here because he came, he came to one. And he says, well, I'm thinking about changing from what I'm doing and adding a new revenue stream. And I said, have you looked at all of them? He said, no, I just thought that this would be where I'd go. I go, how did you come up with that decision? <laughs> the number of like million dollar decisions that are made with like no data just blows my mind. <laughs> But it's it's true. We we need that vision, the goals set, and they don't always have to be like hyper specific. But you got to know where you're going, right? You got to know what it takes to win the Super Bowl. How many games you got to win, right? Like you have to have an understanding of where you're going in order to show up every day and do the hard stuff that it takes to get there. Because running a business is hard. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is not an easy cakewalk for anyone. And for you to show up disciplined and do the things you need to do to succeed every single day, you do need to have a really clear vision of where you're going and why you're doing it. So are there some, well, I mean, since marketers don't know everything, <laughs> I, hey, I, Mickey said it. I'm just repeating it, folks. Need to break um, it to you. <laughs> Is there a basic outline for these micro businesses that we're talking about this morning? So in terms of their goals, one of the things I like to do, because people get caught up on annual planning, right? One year per one year per one year, but one year is not really that long. You can't really accomplish a ton in one year. And we always tend to overestimate what we can get done in one year and underestimate what we can get done in three or five years. And so I like to start the other way. I like to start long-term. So vision, long-term, 10 to 20 years, where do you see yourself? And that can be really fun, creative exercise. You don't have to have numbers or anything like that, but you need to start there and then work your way back. Okay, 10 years, five years, three years, where do I want to be? That midterm three years is a super important place because that is just enough time to get some serious stuff done. And you have a long enough runway to pivot and make changes and adjustments along the way. So if you can set those three-year goals, whether it's revenue, whether it's number of customers, whether it's number of team members, whatever that goal is, that's where we want to be focusing is the three-year goal. And every step along the way, we're checking in how far are we, where do we need to go? Are we in the right direction? If you just keep moving in the general direction of your goals, you're eventually going to get there. The goal has a tendency to move. As oh. you go through that three-year process. Yep. And so you're always re-evaluating and restating what that 10, 5, and 3-year goal is. You got it. You got it. And I think sometimes we let the hard times waver our faith and commitment. Sometimes we think oh. that, you know, the universe, the recession, all these things are telling me that I've set my goals to be too ambitious. And I don't love that perspective. <laughs> I personally am a like, let me show you how I do it kind of a person. If somebody says that I can't do something or shouldn't do something or things don't look like they're going to work out, I like to step up and try and prove people wrong, or prove, yeah. prove the world wrong. And I think business owners who really succeed, who really do scale and get through those hard times are the ones who have that perspective of, okay. It doesn't look good. I'm going to I'm going to make it work. I'm going to figure out a way. I'm going to get scrappy and keep pushing because I have faith that even though this stuff is happening, I can still get to where I want to be. And micro businesses have that ability to be flexible and move much quicker, but 
as you were saying earlier, they're reluctant to do that because they're so busy doing what I call the the anusia of the day to day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to have the high level um, vision and oversight of the business. If you're not acting like the CEO, acting like the head of your organization, if you're working within it as just a, a service delivery person, you're missing out. You, you need to be able to step back and take a look into your business and see, okay, who's where, how can I leverage these people, these things for growth? And you need to commit to doing that consistently. If it's once a month, it's not enough. Like I like to have people start with one hour a day of like high level looking at the business, doing the revenue generating, identifying what are the big things that I need to do. And if you can start there, pull oh, amazing things can happen in just like three to six months. I have a tendency, I'm, I'm an early riser. So mm -hmm. that creative, that kind of time for me is the very first thing in the morning. Not everybody's wired the same way. Yeah, I am also an early riser. I was a competitive swimmer. So the mornings are my time. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what time as long as it's consistent and it's not distracted. I think that's really the key. The mornings are great because there's not a lot of distractions early morning. Most people are asleep. Right? You don't have kids or anyone dinging your phone at five or six o'clock in the morning. But throughout the day, you really do have to use your focus. You have to turn off distractions, put your phone away and really get into the moment for that time. Because the more distracted you are, the more busy work naturally is going to follow. So do you put like uh, LinkedIn, podcast, YouTube, that kind of stuff on your calendar as an appointment? I do because I, 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 if I didn't, I wouldn't treat it as, well, I don't have to. But if I see it on the calendar as an appointment, that's for me. Yeah. So I batch create content. So instead of doing it every week, that just doesn't, my life is chaos. I have a four-year-old. My husband's gone all the time <laughs> running a business. I got clients. It just doesn't make sense for me to do it that way. And so what I do is every quarter, I block off a whole day. Oh. And I'll write, come up with topics, try and create as much as I can. And then for that week, my goal is to try and break it out into as many pieces of content that I can. And I schedule it all in advance. And then once a month, I'll go in for a couple hours and make tweaks and changes and adjustments or add things if needed. But I block off a whole day just to create a bunch of content and get it off my plate for the rest of the, the quarter. See, and that's the difference. But the thing is, we still are accomplishing Same thing. like goals. Yeah. Okay. But there's two different ways that you and I are talking about that we do that. For yeah. me... I'm that one. I need to do that on a regular basis because there's so many different things, mm -hmm. uh, changing it and, and, and stuff. I've tried to do the batch stuff. It doesn't work for me. But that doesn't mean, folks, that what we're saying here is there's not just one way to do marketing. Totally. And you know, you're doing a lot of it yourself too, right? So I leverage a team. I can batch create a bunch of stuff and pass it off to them and let them do all the dirty work for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes I, I think you're living different. what you're telling us to do, right? That's what you're trying to tell maybe, me. Maybe I got that here. Um, but I think if if you can find people to help fill in the gaps and do the stuff that maybe you're not great at doing or, you know, free up some time for you, it might take somebody an hour to do what could take me, oh my goodness, if I was editing video. It would be hours upon hours. The person that I have can do it in like under an hour and bank a bunch of them. So, so it's just a much better use of both of our times. Um, and I found it keeps me consistent. It keeps me pushing. It keeps me growth minded because I got to pay that bill too. <laughs> right. and, and, and this is what so many micro businesses have trouble with. They've got they just see that as another bill. Mm -hmm. But it's a revenue generating bill, right? And if you're tracking. Your metrics, and this one is is tough for a lot of business owners, but if you're not looking at the performance of the things you're doing regularly, it's hard to know if it's actually generating you revenue or not. And so it can look a lot like a bill. But every Monday I sit down and look at, okay, how many people visited my website? How long were they on there? How many people checked my LinkedIn? How many YouTube views do I have? And that helps me identify what's actually working and what's not. And it's all okay. got a goal. Right. So the YouTube channel is to drive people to the website. And so I can see click throughs and I'm looking to see how things are moving and if, if revenue is growing. And if that's the case, 
I'm going to keep on trucking. So since you brought up YouTube and clicks and all of that, I was looking at something with YouTube that we've been looking at for probably the last three quarters of the year. And I am astounded. Literally, folks, I got, I got to say it that way because I am. Um, I'm literally astounded at the amount of time that I put into videos for nothing. Whenever I get clicks and views and minutes on 7 to 15 seconds. Have yeah. you noticed the same thing? It's called, uh, folks, what we're talking about is YouTube shorts. <laughs> yes. YouTube, like many platforms, sees what's working well for others and then will copy it. Right. They, they are a revenue generating machine, too. They need to make money. They need to get active users on the platform. And so they're going to take whatever it is that works from other places and repurpose that. And so YouTube came out with shorts, which are essentially like Instagram reels. They're just quick. Or TikTok is a similar example. They're just quick, fast, easy to consume videos. And I think what it's telling us as a market, as businesses, is that people don't have time to sit down and watch the long stuff as much as they used to. You like get a group that love long form, that want to sit down and engage and do that. But we have a huge new youth, a population of young people who just, they don't have the care or capacity to like, they, they've been hustling <laughs> in the way we have and they're tired and they want the value right away. They don't want the gimmicks. They don't want the long stuff. They want it short. And so if that tells you anything, it's we need to be clearer. We need to be better at delivering value, at telling people the good stuff and getting to the headline much sooner. And shorts is another way to do that. So I had somebody that asked me, Dave, why are you doing these podcasts that are 45 minutes long? Podcasts like, are amazing. Because, but what the thing is, is we got so much to talk about. And then, you know, somebody said, well, then what you need to do is you need to take that 45 minute thing and make about 10 shorts out of it. Well, that's a whole nother. And now you added another whole list of things. Uh, it just continues to go on and on and on. Yeah, I think the key is knowing your market, right? Like if you know your people and what they want, deliver that. Don't worry about all, like keeping up with the Joneses, right? Like that's not what it's about. It's about finding your ideal clients, getting them to know, like, and trust you, making them raving fans and keeping them, giving them what they want. And if that's podcasts, do podcasts. If it's shorts, do shorts. If it, whatever it is, but you got to know your client and you got to be able to be adaptive to what they want and need. Yes, you can repurpose podcasts. I personally use my podcast to repurpose it into tons and tons of content, but I have people to support me and I, I have a system that I follow. Not everyone has that. And so it doesn't make sense. You have to look at your customers and you got to look at yourself too. What can I manage? What's going to make be the best use of my minimal time? How can I maximize that? And a micro business is going, but I still got to do what I do. Mm. Mm, but yeah. this, is, this is so much of it now because it is harder and harder and harder to stand out in the business crowd. Well, and you know what? There's a book I always recommend to micro business owners. If you haven't read it, it's called The E-Myth and they have a revisited. It's the latest edition. So The E-Myth talks about the entrepreneurial myth. <laughs> And I think so many of us fit into that, where we start, we, we have a, a role, a job that we love doing, but we hate being told how to do it and being under the thumb of someone else. And so we start our own business so we can do what we love, but we end up stuck in our business and never working on our business. And we end up a slave to our business again. And so the E-Myth basically teaches you that the best thing you can do is document everything you're doing hire someone to mimic and become you so that you can step out and do the next role and do the next necessary thing. And that's really what it's about. Yes, you're going to be busy, but if you can document and track and then train someone to do the stuff that you do for cheaper, my goodness, <laughs> you're going to be making more money. And so, yeah, it's tedious and yeah, it takes time, but it, but it is needed if you want to scale your business. Yeah. But a micro business says I'm not paying anybody to do it. So, you know, what do you mean cheaper? Uh, the thing is, is folks, what you don't realize is how much really that is costing you when yeah. you do it yourself, when you could do other things that generate more. And I think that's what it, I, it was interesting this weekend. I was um, at my local market, which happens to be 
uh, like 15 different micro businesses all under one roof. Um, that there's a craft brewery at the end of it kind of might be another reason why I go there too, folks. Got to kind of tell you that. Uh, but on the other end of it is my favorite shop, Loose Leaf Tea. Hmm. And I'm talking with this lady, this little just young girl that's running it. And we're talking through some of what you're saying while she's getting my tea for me. And she says, you know, it just really bothers me how some of these people can't understand you know, that this is tea. It's not coffee. She said they come up and ask for coffee. And I go and she says, I just look at them and say, turn around, because literally the coffee shop is like 10 feet behind them. And she was going on about it. And she says, I just want to sell them. It's tell them it's just tea. Relax. I go, there's your marketing sign. Why don't you put that up there? It's tea. Relax. And she was like, looks at me and goes, huh? And I think that's what you're saying is you just got to be able to pay attention to what the clients are telling you. Absolutely. What are the biggest questions you get from clients or prospective clients? Answer those things. That's your marketing, right? One of the easiest ways to create content. So whether it's writing posts or doing videos or even talking points uh, when you're being interviewed, if you don't love leading, you can be interviewed um, is answering questions. It's one of the greatest things you can do is look at, okay, what are the 10 most common questions I get asked about my industry, my business, what I do? I'm going to answer those and I'm going to just do it consistently. I'm going to rinse and repeat. <laughs> I'm just going to keep answering the same questions over and over and over again. People will get it. We need repetition. We need to be reminded. And, and that's going to help you grow your business because people will understand what makes you different. They're going to trust you because you provided an answer to a question they had. So you are now the expert. So folks, since we are in the cleaning industry, and I do like to talk about cleaning, Sean and I was just talking on a previous podcast, and one of the things, and it just became kind of one of those things in a podcast conversation, got my light bulb go doing to exactly what you're saying right there. My program for next year, just rinse. Mm -hmm. It seems like it is the conversation that we have about everything. When And floors are the main thing that we're cleaning. It's the most expansive, and that's what almost all of our cleaning contractors are doing. And the one big thing is they don't rinse. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to the infectious services and surfaces and stuff. And I'm like, and, and, it, and it's back to what I told the young lady this weekend, just relax, it's tea. Back to that short little... I'm finally getting it, Mickey. It's taken me a while. <laughs> but that's most businesses. If, if you go onto website pages of any small businesses, you won't, you'll see just walls of writing. They give you every story, everything possible, and nobody reads it. We I'm, need a headline, I, I, a bullet. <laughs> I, 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 I got to raise my hand, folks. I, I, I'm of the age where that's what we did. We've done it all of our life. And you, that's an old habit that's so freaking hard to break. It is. It is. <laughs> Pardon my dog. <laughs> Anytime FedEx drives by, he has to let me know that there might be a package. That's his favorite ah, thing. His name we don't care about an intruder. There's a package coming, yeah. folks. Mom, it might be treats at the door. That's that's it right there. <laughs> He's a good guard dog, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But um, I think... The more clear you can be, if you can think of it like an elevator pitch or a great analogy, a friend of mine is a, a branding expert. And she talks about the goldfish mind. So yeah. if you think of your ideal clients having the brain of a goldfish where they only have three seconds of memory or capacity, can you deliver your message in that three seconds? Can you stand out? Can you let them know what it is you do and why you're different in that short period of time? If you can't, that's your homework. You need to be able to let people know who you are and what you do in as little word as possible so they'll remember it. Mickey, I've been working on a program for a number of years, and I just released it actually to the public this year. Uh, I've been doing it in private for uh, some of my people in my master's class. But this year I put it out um, uh, actually at the uh, Florida School Plant Manager Association. And folks, if you go to our YouTube channel, 
you'll be able to see the first recording of that. And it's a program called Getting to Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to go into too much of it, but it is to what you're saying. Uh, and somebody told me earlier along the three second goldfish. And that's why these short clips, the shorts work. Um, we actually found a, a system online that we can take this podcast. I could cut out just a little piece of it and make a short that I can put up there. It's just not something I put on my agenda yet, but I got to tell you folks for 23, you're going to see a lot more of these shorts being proactive because this is those short statements, sound bites. Yeah. Yeah, they are there. And you know, each piece of content you put out there has to have a purpose. And so with, with three seconds to 10 seconds, you don't have a ton of time. And so it's great no. to build awareness. It's great to let people know who you are, what you do, but it's not necessarily the stuff that's going to sell people or educate people or let them know your unique value proposition and why they should buy from you. And so you have to remember that, okay, I'm going to produce a bunch of shorts, but I probably need to answer those other questions somewhere else. So whether that's on my website homepage, right? Letting them know those details there. You, you just have to remember that everything has a reason. And if you don't know what the point is or the, what the reason is, stop, don't do it and figure out the point first. So one of the things that we did is on our podcast channels, uh, I mean, on our YouTube channels, all the ones that we have, what we did is we started putting the shorts first in the list. And folks, yeah. if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure that Mickey would be glad to help you with it. There is a way to go into YouTube and organize all of your videos, featured videos, shorts, most recent, put them in the order. What we did is learning this and looking back at the data, put the shorts first because that's what people want. That doesn't mean that we don't get rid of these 45 minute uh, videos and podcasts because there still is a lot of people my age that still need them. Well, and you can also go back and you can also send them back to the more. So if they get the short, they can go to the 45 minute, and get the whole story. Yeah. Most of the time we need to know if something is worth it, if something is for us before we commit time. Right. So if you've got a 45 minute podcast episode, I want to make sure that I'm actually going to be using my time wisely and investing that time, which is limited yeah. into that. And so a short is a great way to show someone, to hook someone in like, hey, here's the here's the promise. Here's what you're going to get. Here's why you should listen. Here's what you can expect. And if you can do that with the shorts, you're going to drive more people to the longer stuff as long as you deliver. OK, Mickey, so I'm going to put you on a spot. Yep. Give me a five minute short that I can use for Mickey Anderson. Yeah. So most business owners are stuck doing busy work, either doing tons of stuff that isn't growing their business or nothing and just hoping that it grows. I help you build a strategy to actually grow your business so that you're not wasting time or energy on stuff that isn't helping you. So see folks, that's a short, that's just a little piece. Now you're going to see that Yep. On our YouTube channel, there's a short for this podcast, and it's just that easy. Yeah, and I'll give you a really easy framework, too. So if you're worried about, okay, what do I say in what order? Super, super simple. Start with the problem that it solves. So what's the problem? Then we're going to go with the solution. How do you solve it? And then the result. What is the outcome? So if we think, for example, of um, getting to wow, I think it was what you called it. Correct. So the problem is? Nobody knows what wow is. How do you help them identify what wow is? A two-hour workshop. Yeah, and then what can they expect as a result? Focus. There you go, that's your short. See, and there you go. That, it, but it's, and this is why we're working with Mickey and we enjoy having you on the podcast again uh, and Folks, she'll be on it for the whole year next year. We hooked her in. Um, so, but this, but this is it. But you've got to then put that together because that short needs to go to something that answers. So don't create the short and not have anywhere for it to go, folks. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's got to be a reason, right? Like I said, so where are you sending them with this short? Is it to your website? Is it to a long form video? Whatever it might be, we call it the call to action. What do you want people to do? <laughs> and so you'll, if you go down the YouTube rabbit holes of the biggest and best channels, they have a framework they follow to keep people to hook them. And it's what's the promise? Why should you stay until the end? And then what can you expect as a result? And those three pieces can be really powerful because if you've got a long form piece of content, like why, why should they stay all the way until the very end? You wanna get their curiosity. You wanna hook them and keep them. So we're always thinking of what's the point. For YouTube channels like that, they're monetized. They make money when you watch their stuff. And so that's their point. That's how they're gonna get you to watch it. But if your goal is to sell something or to get someone to go to your website, how can you drive them there? And the solution part, that middle, so you've got the problem, solution, result. The solution can be go to my website and join my program or sign up for a quote or whatever. But that's where you're driving people. And this is the lessons that I'm learning this year, Mickey, because we've kind of finally got to a point where uh, I got to tell you, COVID came and I was blitzed. I, mm. I didn't have time to just basically take care of the inflow. This year, it's been slower. So I've taken the time to really look at what's been going on. Where was the where was the content? And all of the videos I put out, the podcast, how much time did they actually watch past the first two minutes? It went like a lead balloon so quickly. And that's typical for YouTube, right? So um, YouTube actually, it's very common for people to watch only a few minutes and then fall off. Um, and, and so your goal ultimately is, okay, if I want them to watch to the very end, how can I continue reminding them to keep watching or how can I keep getting them to stay engaged? And so th there's different tactics you can use. A lot of times those chapters now that they've enabled on YouTube where you can right. mark off or it automatically right. selects what the chapters are, that's helping because people can skip forward to the parts that are most relevant and you keep them. And so you can give them an outline and say, okay, so in this, we're going to talk about A, B, C. If they're like, okay, well, C is relevant to me. I'm going to skip forward to the C part. And if you make it really obvious where it starts and how to get there, oh, man, you're going to keep people longer. And this is the reason, Mickey, that we're going to do these podcasts on video format as well. Because in the podcast, you can't do that as mm -hmm. easily as we could. In, but this was something else I learned this year. I didn't know about chapters. I didn't know how to put them in there. And I got I to gotta tell you. I put the videos up and then I go, oh, crud, I forgot to do that. Um, but it goes back to what you're saying. As a micro business by myself, um, this is the other thing I'm thinking about. Okay, there's so many of these things. I, I'm great at creating the content like this. But you know what? It may be the time to start getting somebody to help to do these things because I just find myself forgetting. I know to do it. Yeah, I think um, there's like two steps, really. First, it's as you do it, document it. How do you do it? How do you want it done? What are the key things you never want to forget? And then you can practice following that checklist, right? Make sure that it's got everything you need. You don't miss anything. That's what I do anytime I'm actually doing anything. <laughs> I'm a checklist person because I will forget. It's gone. I have a four-year-old and I have a memory like her and uh, <laughs> very distractible. But what I've done is I've gone through it so many times that I know that it's great and I can pass that off to a team member and they can have zero experience doing this thing. But if they just follow the checklist, they'll do it, right? No prior instruction necessary. I just make sure that the checklist is so good that I could, I could give it to my husband or my daughter who've never done any of this stuff before and I know that they could get it done. And so how can you set other people up for success? So imagine you're sick or you're going on vacation. How can you set people up for success to take on the things that you can't keep doing? Folks, I think that makes a podcast. Another <laughs> one with Mickey Anderson from up north. I don't know if we're, Mickey, what, are we gonna be able to talk with you next month with everything you've got going in December? I don't absolutely, know. Absolutely, absolutely. I got the time blocked off, we're good. <laughs> See, there you go, folks. We got us on the calendar, okay. That's so it. <laughs> it's the first Monday of every month that Mickey's going to come on. We tape the, the podcast and the video. Uh, usually during that first week, we'll get it out. So please stay um, in tune with us. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
It is hashtag Academy of Clean. There you can find it. So you can stay up with Mickey and the shorts that are coming. Um, you can also find this at pod, uh, let's see, uh, Podbean.com is where we put stuff, but it's actually beyond clean with ace.com. Uh, you can also go to the academy of cleaning.com and find all of our classes, the podcast. And I also have to mention our sponsor, GEM Supply here in Florida. Find that I'm at gemsupply.net. And Mickey, of course, we would like to hear all about your channels and how they can get hold of you as well. Yeah, you can go to heymickeyanderson.com. Yes, like the song. <laughs> and you can find links to all of my channels there. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. My YouTube channel is there. I've got tons of free resources as well, worksheets, workbooks, things that you can use to help grow your business. And I also do monthly free workshops. So anyone who wants to get in and learn these frameworks or try some new things with their business in terms of their marketing, you can register and just go onto my website and, uh, and you'll see the notices for everything there. And we will have all the links for everything that we've just mentioned in the show notes, both on the podcast and the uh, YouTube channel. Mickey, any uh, last parting words of wisdom before we let you go for November? Yeah, I think um, the homework <laughs> I want to give for today for any of the busy business owners who are listening, who are who are working in the business, spending all of their time in there, take some time to reflect on that long-term vision. Where do you really want to go? And then what are the things that are holding you back from getting there? If being busy and not having time to do the other stuff is the problem, you need to, you need to work on that. But come up with that vision. Get inspired on where you want to go and start making time to make that happen. There's another 30 seconds short. <laughs> See, we're full of them. <laughs> yes, we are. Hey, once you get focused, you cannot shut it off, right? It's true. That's true. Folks, there's three words we love here at the Academy and at the podcast, Beyond Clean with Ace. They are healthy, positive, and proactive. So make sure that your journey is just that, healthy, positive, and proactive. Until we talk with Mickey again the 1st of December before she just takes off and goes gallivanting around the world. Have a good one, folks. <laughs>